Hi, my name is Alex Benermon, and I'm a specialist with Arnett Auctions, and we are honored to be here today with Micheline Thomas in her Brooklyn studio. Uh, Micheline is a critically acclaimed artist uh, in some of the best public collections in the world, has enjoyed shows domest domestically and abroad, most recently in the ICA in Boston, and right here in Brooklyn mm -hmm. at the Brooklyn Museum. Yeah. Um, so, Micheline, uh, you make paintings of people, paintings of photographs, uh, various collage works. Would you agree that your paintings are always a sort of translation? I think so. Most of my works, whether they're portraits, landscapes, or um, interiors, um, are sort of translations from reality. And I think one reason why I, I do that is because uh, it's easier for me to uh, sort of find a focal point. Mm -hmm. And I think pulling from reality, you know, is so much more um, an investigation of myself and how I navigate the world and to find a, a deeper meaning and understanding. You know, when I make my paintings, sometimes I could pull from my own sort of imagination but I think reality is so much more raw and there's so much information and discomfort and excitement and happiness and beauty and all these sort of layers that you can pull from that I find exciting. And that's why I use photography to capture a lot of my images, um, like this set, building up the set and using my subjects to, to photograph them in this setting is a way for me to really sort of uh, find a, a, a different meaning within reality. And so sort of translating um, those images into paintings or photographs or collages is actually trying to transform the, the realistic meaning into my own fantasy. Uh, a major part of your works are always uh, collage and collage effects. Mm -hmm. When did that become such an integral part of your work, and uh, how did that come about? I guess the collage effects um, started mostly in undergrad, but it's really funny because <laughs> you uh, revert back to uh, things that you used to do in your past, and collage has always been a part of my practice. Um, while I was an undergrad student, and actually how, before even going to, to art school, I would make these uh, collages. It was a way of sort of navigating and trying to find meaning into image making. Um, I didn't really start out as a trained artist, and so cutting just paper and sort of creating these mini layers were um, an easy effect. I was looking at a lot of Romare Bearden, Mm -hmm. and um, Jacob Lawrence and Will, William H. Johnson and Bill Trailer, like all of these artists that have this very naivete, sensibility, even though they were trained artists, it was sort of like paring down sort of the linear form just with the edge of things and flat planes of color. So I was always very interested in how you could really build up um, just layers of through shapes and composition. Yeah, so after after grad after undergrad, once I got to graduate school, I went to Yale University. I don't know, something happened. There was this great shift that took place. And I think not that I was shy or embarrassed about how I made things, but I always felt a little insecurity because drawing wasn't always my strongest suit. Even though I love to draw and I can draw, and it's more like a linear sort of line form that I create when I do figures. So I was always very sort of shy about showing that particular body of work. And so when I got to graduate school, I sort of put it on the back burner. I pushed it aside. And 
didn't really start uh, engaging into collage making again until after graduate school. A lot of critical focus has been on your portraiture, but I wanted to talk a bit more about your interiors and why that interests you so much and has been playing a larger role in your works lately. Yeah, I think it's interesting. The portraits have taken on their sort of a huge, like, sort of um, priority and sort of in my practice, but also with people are interested in. And I think maybe because how I entered sort of um, the art world was through my portraiture. And I think portraits are very sort of powerful. And I think they they have a great um, sort of uh, representation and dominance in the world of sort of trying to capture the essence of someone. I think, you know, artists that do that, something quite romantic about portraiture. And that's why I entered. And then I started realizing that I was creating these spaces similar to the space we're sitting in right now and how they were... I was removing that. I was sort of creating, going to so much um, laborious work to put these spaces together. But I, all I was depicting were the portrait of the person who was the sitter in that space. But I was removing the one of the major aspects, which was the interior. And so... I guess it's just by looking at my own work and thinking about how it's evolving and as an artist, just like stepping back and really trying to be my own sort of critic of like why I was like removing the, the interior is when the interior started to speak to me. And I started thinking about um, domestic spaces and my own domestic space of how I was raised and what that meant, and why I went to such lengths to create this domestic space, space for the, the subject, of the power of that, of how there was another sense or another layer of collage, of how I was creating these sort of uh, um, tableaus or, or um, fake spaces, um, that reminded me of spaces of my grandmother's space or my aunt's or just very familial spaces from growing up. And how they were so important, but I wasn't really depicting that in my work. And um, not until I found this sort of book that I found at the, uh, one of the Goodwills that I shop at. Um, it was the title of the book is called The um, Good Decorating, um, The Practical Encyclopedia of Good Decorating and Home Improvement. And I found one of the volumes, and when I was looking through it, I noticed that it sort of resonated with me, a space that was very familiar to these spaces that I'm creating. And so from that jump off, I started exploring the notion of fabrication and sort of uh, dressing up and sort of these faux materials like this wood, this sort of fake wood paneling here of how in the late 50s and 60s, how materials uh, made a sort of drastic shift in how people sort of um, designed their homes, their interiors of their homes, by using wallpaper and these sort of faux panelings, and how I use these faux panelings and what that meant of a nature of like covering up or masking or the artifice of like makeup of presentation, and so for me the interior became just as important as the sitter who was sitting in them. And thinking about what that really meant and how and what that meant for my own work and how I was going to so such great lengths to create these spaces and covering up the walls and like they did, you know, in the late fifties and sixties when plastics were introduced 
to industrial materials were introduced to these homes, people didn't go to great lengths to what we do now. We're stripping down those in our homes. Like renovation today is completely different where we want them very modern, with them clean. We want sort of that very nice, pristine white wall so we can sort of decorate it in our own. But in, during that time, people wanted to cover up those walls. So family has always been a big part of your work. Yes. Uh, your mother's always been a major influence, uh, you've mentioned in the past. Now that you're a mother yourself, how, do, how has that changed you know, the types of works you're exploring? That's very interesting because I, I get that question a lot about the shift. You know, My mother was, a, was and still to some extent, my mother was, um, and still to some sort of instance in my work, a huge part of my trajectory and my practice. She died uh, last year, so um, I've been trying to sort of figure out um, how to continue, because she's been a part of my body of work since graduate school, and um, I'm I remember sitting thinking, what do I make now? <laughs> Where do I go from here? And then I thought, well, I am a mother myself, so how do I pull from that experience um, and what I've learned from my own mother and how she raised me? And I find that my, my newer body of work is becoming very um, less uh, about systems and about... Um, how I make things and it's becoming easier and um, I would say much more playful and abstract um, and I think it's just watching my own daughter grow up just realizing that um, you can pretty much make whatever you want to make you know and as long as it's coming from an authentic place for me um my daughter brings so much uh, joy in, in my life you know, on a different level that when I come to the studio, um, I'm just like, okay, if, if this is not going the way I want, then let's just go this way. It's just like, and my, my work in the past has always been like, it has to be this way. I need to get this aspect from it. I need to make it look like this. And because I was very comfortable with how I made things. Now it's just like I have all these different materials where I'm exploring and very excited about it, just adding uh, like from airbrushing to silk screening to bringing glitter back into my work. I used to do a lot of glitter paintings and I have, a, I have like all these like containers in the back of the room here of glitter and they're just sitting there. And so my last painting that I presented at um, um, Freeze in London was completely different than any painting that most people know me to present. And uh, it was very exciting to get the feedback because it has all the layers and essence of uh, materials and sort of, sort of the ideas of where I'm working from. But it, was pre it looked just completely different. It was a portrait, but it was very abstract, pulling from, you know maybe postmodern painters, you know, and uh, some pop artists, you know, looking at, I started looking a lot at Leger and Tom Wesselman, and I had the great pleasure to write about Tom Wesselman um, for his show in Canada. And so I went to see his uh, retrospective there. And so I think it had a great influence on the work. Um, with sort of layering and sort of sort of deconstruction and abstraction. That actually brings me uh, to another point. Uh, beauty is always a, a big part of your work. Uh, yes. Whether the dealing the work is dealing with beauty itself or aesthetically is yeah. very very pleasing, very seductive in the use of its patterns and colors. Is there any room for the the ugly in, in your body of work? It's really interesting because I think my work is very ugly. I just, it's like it's 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 interesting because I think there is a sense my work does stems from these notions of beauty and that's sort of um, 
a theoretical aspect that I sort of presented in my work. Because I think beauty is very, it has both worlds. I think beauty is very problematic. And when you sort of really unravel uh, the historical notions of beauty, it's not pretty. It's never been pretty. We present our images and women and people and men, you know, as beautiful objects for centuries. But to get to that place, it's come from a very sort of ugly place. I mean, imagine sitting in a corset for hours, binded. I mean, those were very painful, sort of beautiful notions that women put themselves through. But yet they were beautiful. You know, Asian women binding their feet. Those were sort of be known as beautiful aspects of our history, but they were very ugly and painful. So I don't, you know, and when I think of beauty and how I present it, it's not necessarily because I think life is all sort of, you know, the sort of like, oh, we're, you're beautiful and this seductive and sort of this, this allure that it's just like all good 100% because it's not. I mean, beauty and its aspects of how young girls see themselves, how they look into the mirror and what they think or open a magazine and how they feel that they, they, they may, that's the image that they have to portray to, to um, get attention or sort of be attractive or attracted to someone. Um, those, are, those are really sort of uh, uncanny moments. And, and so in that sense, I think my work deals with a lot of ugliness. It's how you look at beauty. Nicolene, could you tell me a bit about some recent projects you've been working on uh, as well as the Barclays Center mural and how that really struck home with you being here in Brooklyn? Well, the Barclays Center was a really great uh, project and when I was invited to do that because it was a great challenge to do a public piece, a public art project at a venue that's very like, <laughs> you know, public, you know, and where many thousands of people are going to see. And um, the great challenge for me was tr how to transform my aesthetic into that scale where people would still feel an aspect of what I do, Mickley Thomas, or they can look at it and feel, oh, that's Mickley Thomas. And so because my collage work, and it's so funny, it goes back to collage, became, is such a huge part of my practice, I decided to focus on that part of it. Because I didn't, I'm, I'm really interested in allowing aspects of my work to stand on their own. And not that there's a need for me to put a huge mural that's similar to my paintings. I wasn't really interested in that. I wasn't really interested in depicting or showing that public as a public art piece um, because I want the paintings to be the paintings and so I really thought about that particular space where it was and so the more I started thinking about it I started thinking about murals and um, how mm -hmm. my photography plays a part and my collage plays, plays a part and so I integrated the two as sort of uh, these digital forms. And so I created a collage that was about this size and then scaled it up digitally in the computer to the size that it is at the Barclay Stadium. And then we printed it as a vinyl mural. And then once it was printed as a vinyl mural, I then went and embellished it more with paint. I'm working on other projects. I'm hoping to, to do another film so I'm working on that. Um, and uh, I'm getting ready for a show in Paris and a show in Berlin. So um, there's a lot going on. There's, there's, and I'm also working on a feature film where I am uh, photographing the, the, uh, the two main characters 
here actually in January to create uh, the sort of um, primary image for the movie. And then I'll have a small part in the film. So I'm very excited about that um, acting because I come from a theater arts uh, experience as well. So that's, it's kind of nice to sort of like have that um, part of my sort of creativity to enter into my own, my own work. Um, and so I'm, I, there's, a, there's a lot of different things going on that's outside of the studio the projects that I would never think that I would be a part of. I'm featuring my documentary and uh, Basel, which is really exciting because the documentary I did of my mother before she passed has taken on a new life that was extremely beyond my expectations. And I'm excited to say that HBO um, has decided to feature it on their um, HBO documentary series starting in 2014. I want to thank you again for welcoming us into your studio, to your live set, so to speak. Um, we look forward to seeing uh, all your, your future projects, seeing the, uh, the film at Basel again, and thank you for having us. Thank you.